Hi and welcome to the next episode of the Business Booster series in association with Shebang. We're shooting today at the Quorum at Lower Parel, which is a members only club. Excited to have Tripti with me. Tripti is the founder and CEO of Details Communication. It is a brand communication agency. Tripti and I have worked together for so many years. Tripti, it's yes. so good to have you here. Thank you so much for having me. It's always fun to meet you and chat with you. And I think the most exciting thing is like for me when I'm interviewing people for this is people that I know for many years and truly can vouch for because I've worked with you in, you know you in so a personal much. capacity. So Tripti today we are talking about starting out in the right. food space and I know you've worked with the best brands in the food and lifestyle space. I'm, I'm not going to limit it to food but um my love for food uh, because you have managed some of my favorite restaurants. So <laughs> I'm going to start by asking you Tripti first tell us in details what it is that you guys do. Um so we have four main services there's PR there's marketing there's social media and there's creative design okay. the reason we started with all these verticals is because this is mainly what food and lifestyle brands need yeah. so we didn't want people to look outside and we just wanted to manage everything um in house in house yeah so we have a control on the entire storytelling Yeah, absolutely. So you know, today I um we've been having this conversation about PR, and a lot of people still refer back to the traditional PR, which is, does not really exist anymore. But I want to ask you how important PR and social media are to kind of drive a food business um in today's day and age. Um, is one more important than the other? Social media PR. So PR, of course, has changed its definition. Uh, like you said, it's not traditional anymore. But PR can never die. Yeah. Um. So I think now PR has um. expanded a little more now it's more pr and marketing yeah um and you need always need social media to kind of amplify yeah. that yeah so pr um, necessarily like basically consists of um your articles so this includes your main lines which is your newspapers your magazines mm. and both these now have online versions mm. Mm. um it also includes a lot of online platforms yeah So all this comes under PR. Okay. Um, marketing is a tool that we use to amplify PR. Um, it's not easy for a brand that's maybe ten years old or a brand that's even one month old yeah. to keep getting spoken about. So you need to create content uh, for people to kind of write about. It. Yeah. Um, as you know, I mean, the city and India in general is flooded with new brands like every minute. Yeah. So. marketing the kind of marketing associations or collaborations or initiatives that you do help us get you the the right kind of articles in pr correct so for a startup i mean why would someone talk about you if you don't have something super unique or different uh we need to create that messaging through marketing yeah. and pr so it's a good mix and social media is extremely important yeah. uh because that's the only place where you can control your uh messaging so where you know you can kind of tell people what you want to say whereas pr is something that you have to depend on someone else to write your story so i think social media is a great platform to kind of you know put your story brand story out there in the exact way or the uh, kind of vision you have like to put it out there in the best way possible. Yeah, I think you explained that so well because uh, there is a big difference. There is a big difference and I think that you need to get them both right. You, you know? need to get them both right. In fact, you need to get all three right. Your yeah. PR, your marketing and your social media, everything now goes hand in hand. Earlier it was like completely different. You either did PR or you either did social media, yeah. but now it's important and the reason it's important Shan is because there's a different audience. uh for everything for example right now if you see facebook yeah um a lot of the older uh target audience is on facebook yeah whereas the younger ta- target audience has now moved to instagram so, or other platforms yeah. um whereas newspapers still have their fixed audience um i mean so for me someone like me personally um i open my newspapers every day me and too. i'm still on instagram all the time mm-hmm. so i think it's very important uh when you're launching a brand if i open a newspaper i need to see your brand if i am online i need to see your brand if i am you know passing around and i see a really cool collaboration that's where so basically try and hit every target audience and every platform that's that's a very valid point i hope yeah. that you guys will note that because don't choose just one you can't yeah, choose one you can't especially choose. for your first 3 to 6 months your launch phase yeah. that's when you need to make sure that you have everything in place Probably. like a complete strategy don't be in a hurry to launch yeah. because you have one chance 
otherwise doing the whole and we have had brands who've come after they failed um in their initial yeah. launch phase yeah. and then to redo the messaging is like five times the Hard effort up. yeah yeah Yeah, I feel like those clients should be charged more because your effort will be so much more. Yeah. Um okay, so I want to ask you about visuals, you know, Instagram and stuff is a very visual platform and you know PR when you get an email from a PR agency or someone reaches out to you, I feel like if your pictures are good, it's half the battle won, right? So, um do you think that the best content is really created in-house? Should brands outsource this? Um how does that work? Uh so there are two types of content. Uh you have to have a 50% of both. So when you're launching, um your initial launch pictures etc you need to definitely have a bank which is professionally clipped yeah. and styled because that's your first impression but then there's a whole lot of topical content that you need to create which can't be professional because then it looks fake uh-huh. so you need to also have that real imagery happening constantly on the brand page um so your introduction with professional pictures and your constant updates with um you know real life uh imagery phone click pictures mood mood pictures yeah. like you could be right here sipping a cup of coffee and i click a picture and that's yeah. real um because everything does i mean in reality it's not as styled right staged, as it yeah, yeah, yeah it's yeah, not yeah. as staged, staged so yeah. you need to have a very good balance between the two Okay, awesome. That's that's good to know. But definitely invest in your first photo shoot, like you said. Hundred percent. A good a good photo shoot. Okay, let's talk about the question um, of influencers. Yes. Um, you know, in a food in our in our food industry, we have so many influencers, fashion also, but food of course. And how do you use influencers to grow your clients' brands? I also want to know how do the influencers differ from each other if there are categories, and how do you kind of engage with them to <laughs> maximize value? I can write a book on this. You can write a book on this. <laughs> but the reason I ask you in such detail. is because i food influencers are just so many okay so um i just to correct you yeah. there are very few food influencers specifically oh, talking specifically. only okay. about food okay um secondly as an agency um i think a couple of years ago i realized that it was becoming a lot about the numbers game hmm. so um you know maybe someone has 100k followers but out of that maybe 30k are genuine yeah. um and it and i don't blame the influencers a lot of big brands actually stopped collaborating with um, content creators if they didn't have a certain number so then they started buying fake followers which yeah. also got their engagement down so now as an agency for the last few years what we've done is we we've changed our strategy completely and mm. it's really helped us in terms of sales with most of our like all our brands mm. i would say that's yeah, good that's true, yeah. um but um we firstly we understand who the target audience is for the brand mm. what is the age group what is the area based if it's a delivery brand or if it's a, a you know in house dining brand uh we decide who the target audience is what the area is what the age group is that we want to target and then we pick out our influencers and these influencers may not be bloggers may not be food influencers they could be someone who lives in the area and goes out every day correct so now we have a balance where we look at a couple of for example for a food brand a couple of people who talk about food yeah a lot of people who talk about who are just i mean that's their lifestyle of going out ordering in and a lot of real life uh, influencers yeah. like just people who have credentials who are maybe real life entrepreneurs or who spend out or who order in a lot a lot more than you know maybe a, a, a yeah a traditional blogger traditional blogger and and i think that it's it's about you identifying that's where you yes. come in as an agency so we spent every single day finding new influencers updating our lists we don't copy paste our lists for any yeah. brands yeah. um so we create like fresh lists for every brand brand of course there are few overlaps of people of who course. worked for us but otherwise like it's a fresh list for every brand and it's customized based on this criteria that i just told you i actually love that because having that strategy yes. for each person is so different actually that brings me to my next question is do different categories of food maybe somebody does burgers or somebody does asian or somebody does indian do they need different strategies depending 100%. on the cuisine or is it lifestyle different food different mm. what is it like no i think each brand whatever category it is each brand has a different vision and a yeah. different way so firstly you need to identify who, like who your brand is 
like what yes. your brand is like humanize the brand yes so you know how old would your brand be how well traveled would your brand be um you know um would your brand be uh, targeted more towards men or women mm. first you need to have a clear understanding before you launch and then you and you know it could be maybe kids are your biggest target audience for that brand because the food item is such that kids yeah. you know i'm giving you an example that kids would like to order that Correct. in and then you work on pester power for example yeah. yeah so that's again a huge thing so you need to identify who you want to target much before you launch hmm. so i'll tell you just as an agency yeah. we've got better conversion sales wise with um, micro influencers yeah uh, you know maybe people with 3k 2k 4k followers giving us way more business than people with like 500k 100k 30k 40k just between you and me that is so, between everyone watching between everyone but every, but you know what i think that's a very valid point to note that she does not tripti does not mean that you don't need to collaborate with the 100k you have and 500 to. you still have to but you it, have to mix it up yeah and it's brand specific right yeah. your agency will actually put that um, right. plan together i want to also ask you next about budgeting right so when right. you're starting out and you are looking to hire a pr agency what all should they budget for before coming to you right. because you know i've noticed one thing brands take on an external agency and then they complain yes. it's like uh, are but you didn't tell me you charge me this much more or you didn't tell me this is charged for so if you could just spell, spell that out sure so uh, firstly i'm going to repeat that your first 3 to 6 months please don't cringe on budgets yeah. you're not going to see overnight results uh you have to have um you know something set you have to be able to invest like in the first 6 months yeah. in your brand that's very important for your storytelling um i'll just tell you the main things that you need to invest in one is your agency fee um which is uh, usually a fixed monthly retainer for most agencies at least that's how it is for yeah. us and i'm sure yeah. it's the same for everyone most, else yeah. um then you have your photography cost uh which again based on the number of pictures that you want to click which you and your agency decide it's usually either a per uh, photo charge or it's uh you know some photographers even give you a um, bulk. a bulk rate yeah for like 30 images yeah it's 30 or above you usually get a bulk rate uh then you have your social media um social media ad budgets yeah. so that like i would say like a minimum like that you would need yeah. is maybe like a like bare minimum is like 15 to 20k like yeah. bare minimum yeah. and then in case you want to uh, you know advertise with any aggregators like swiggy zomato etc um i mean that totally depends on your plan that's not something that we do for all if you want any content creators you want to do any paid videos etc with them that's something you need to uh, budget for um i think these are more or less your uh, fixed costs and if, keep this in mind these are of yeah. course not specific gifting and gifting gifting so your yeah. biggest cost would be food uh just feeding people as much as possible yeah. because that's the best way you can market food get the word out there yeah best, best way because if i eat something and i like it there's no way i'm not going to order again that's just i mean Absolutely. That's the best way to market your food brand. Yeah, absolutely. I thank you Tripti for actually yeah. being honest and spelling out the costs yeah. for that. Um it's great for a business that's starting out to, right. you know, keep in mind so please make notes. Um okay, next I want to ask you is how important is it like to we were talking about PR I was doing another interview about how um you know being a face of a brand is so important today. It's all like especially networking now today I'm all about meeting founders and entrepreneurs. Right. So how important is it to have a founder face behind a brand? I think it is important um I always recommend it personally because it's just you're humanizing your brand yes, then yes. and it's something that you can um you know you can relate to that person or um you know maybe that person is talking about the brand so you understand how passionate the person was the purpose so it's not just like another corporate brand you have someone talking yeah. about it telling you why they've started it um you know what was the reason of selecting certain in- ingredients or coming up with this concept why it's different from the others it's just nice to have someone spelling it out absolutely absolutely okay i want to ask you my last two questions the la- the second last one would be uh, how um much can a brand handle pr in house so should you i mean of course i'm asking yeah. an agency no, 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 owner no, no, i'm going to be honest yeah i'm asking an agency owner but i feel like You know a lot of people do make that mistake initially and they think like we'll just do it with word of mouth what stage can you handle it internally and what stage do you need the agency so i feel your launch like your first 3 to 6 months like i said don't try to do it in house unless you have experts you've hired 
who have yeah. already done this yeah. but if it's a completely new team that doesn't have experience in social media and marketing uh, because uh, also there's a lot happening in house at that time yeah. so even me like when i'm looking at brand details i try to get a fresh perspective um, only because when you're so emotionally attached to your own brand sometimes you can't look at it um, yeah, yeah. yeah from another perspective that maybe a third person could Mm-hmm. um also when it's your own brand you land up getting very emotional about yeah. it and you overthink decisions so when you have a third person who's not been involved like i mean is not the founder of the yeah. brand yeah. they can give you um advice that you wouldn't have thought of yeah very true it's an outsider's perspective yes, so an outsider's yeah. and plus i mean if you have to do it yourself then there's also so much research yeah. so much of reaching out um you know thinking of um what the best way to do like before agencies they already have that kind of expertise mm, correct so okay yeah. awesome my last question for you is um i wanted to ask you given the pandemic is this a right time to launch a food startup it's the best it is okay yeah. so give us a few examples maybe of some of sure. your clients and if there's any case study that you've seen that you know in covid because people firstly to people thought of course when it was like touch and you know you could get good. but now everyone's ordering in and everyone is hosting at home yes. so your thoughts so um just as per statistics of i mean i mean because we keep seeing what the yeah. market trend is so yeah. the current market trend is food gifting mm. is huge. huge and people are hosting a lot more at home just because of covid so this is the best time also everyone i mean covid has got everyone a little more on social media so the time spent on social media is much much higher yeah so i think this is the best time because we've seen like most of our a lot of our case studies have been in covid so louis burger would be yeah. one of our biggest case studies um i think it's uh, actually been the highest sales that any uh, delivery wow. brand has done in pan india and i think everyone was talking about wow. it um so i think that's definitely coco cart was also a lockdown uh, project yeah. which we handled and uh, again we did a mix of real life influencers and um, you know the media and we reached out to food and lifestyle yeah. bloggers and influencers and again that i mean today everyone knows how uh, absolutely well they are doing yeah. um i think um, it, like in a food restaurant space salt in uh, karjat yeah that's also been a lockdown project and i think um, like i i get calls like every day for a team there yet wow. and i think that touch were doing really really well so it's definitely a great great time like we have so many case studies of people who've done like really well uh during this um uh, lockdown and also old brands who've then you know uh, reinvented themselves this yeah. lockdown so important so important so important tough time yeah. so they have to kind of exactly yeah. like the beer burger festival for woodside yeah. um you know we've been handling it for yeah. 10 years now and it's something that everyone looks forward to and last year was the peak of the lockdown mm-hmm. and um the re- like restaurants um uh, had barely just started so we made the entire uh, beer burger festival uh into a home delivery yeah that yeah. was amazing so it was a picnic at home so a lot of brands have reinvented themselves and uh, created things to even like dine in like you know people who are not big on delivery have created like delivery specific uh segments or yeah, products yeah it's important like you said right go with the times and kind of create your un- your own unique strategy against your brand and yeah. and don't be rigid with your brand yeah. uh because i think just with the way social media is changing with the way things are changing by the minute there are new things like cropping up every second so i yeah. think this really helps like just being fluid with your brand going with the flow and learning to adapt to either what the situation is or either you know what the new trends are yeah so absolutely. that's very important as a brand owner to be able to yeah. do that thank you tripti it's been so lovely chatting with you about you know honestly behind pr and i think this is a these are great tips for small businesses starting out and who don't know like i always say they get confused where to put their money right. so thank you so much but like i want to ask you before you go how does one get in touch with you and what stage does a brand need to reach out to you to want to work with details uh see people have reached out to us at any stage there's no stage specifically but if you're launching a completely new um brand, you know yeah. a completely new brand like we like to be involved maybe one or two months prior so we can help you with that process too in the sense 
there's a lot of like planning that happens and who we want to gift it to how you want to gift it etc yeah. so i think all that is really important to okay yeah uh, like the longer the more time we have the better it's planned but we have people who come to us saying we have a launch in one week yeah. and uh, yeah that always happens that always happens so anyone in the food lifestyle space can get in touch uh, yeah anyone in the food lifestyle retail fmcg uh, we handle everything lifestyle kids okay lovely yeah. so guys you know that if if you are launching a brand uh, or have already launched and are looking for a you know like a rebrand or a re a pr for your brand details is your agency uh thank you thank you to keep just so lovely much, chatting with you i felt like i was sitting in my living room <laughs> and having a chat it actually felt yeah. <laughs> thank you so thank much thank you so thank much you.